All right, go. Take it away, Ross. Okay, well, you've already had a little introduction to Jerry Ross, <laughs> uh, but you should know he's a past president, vice president of the club, and he's been here since the early years of its formation. Uh, he's participated in many lively discussion groups, scheduled and otherwise, probably. And um, he's a big proponent of working with a small telescope and the things you can see with it. And his observing guy, I'm sure he's going to point out to you too, is his astronomical Bible. So with that, it's all yours, Gary. Thank you. I appreciate this table. Boy, it's like get the projector up a little bit higher. Make a better image, please. So the keystone won't be so severe. One of those antique power points. No, 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 not yet. Well, well, in due time. Oh. Most of you know, or some of you know, and those of you who don't know are about to learn that I follow the old ways. The day. I am one of the last of the old line observers. I defy you to load any of your stinking apps on this thing. <laughs> because this telescope's apps are here, right here, and in my hands. And that's how this thing is directed to the wonders of the heavens. And it is small, it is a little on the primitive side, but if Riyadh were here, who used to be my god, now he's yesterday's man, but that's the price he pays for being in Austria all the time. It's like a, like a, 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 a di dictator of a totalitarian state. Never leave the country because you might not be able to get back in. So, Riyadh and I used to do some interesting things together. He was my, let's say, he was my Obermeister, and I used to observe for him, largely using this telescope, five centimeter refractor, F11. Now, the title of this talk is The Near Solar Neighborhood, to repeat it, from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> Now, I'm not a big Mr. Rogers fan, a little too old for that. I have a great deal of, of respect for his program and his whole philosophy, however. I'm not here to make fun of Mr. Rogers. That would be like making fun of, I don't know, Eleanor Roosevelt, whatever. But by Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, what I mean is the equivalent of my mother's old neighborhood in Royal Oak, north of 12 Mile Road, Crooks Road area, where, by the way, on the 22nd of December will be the discussion group. It will not be a fa family-friendly affair. It will be heavy drinking, maybe fighting over women. <laughs> not really. I mean, no, religion's fair game. Let her rip. What I mean is, the kind of place where I spent my childhood, I mean, a real neighborhood, not like Purgatorial Chesterfield, or the Golgotha of Farmington Hills, or the unsured hell of Camp Novi, those kind of places where those kind of people live. <laughs> you know who you are, <laughs> and I know what you aren't. Now, in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, Fulton Heights, Royal Oak, whatever, Fulton Heights is in Grand Rapids, those are real neighborhoods where you can borrow sugar from your neighbors rather than have an alarm system go off when they come to your front door. Right. This little telescope, in my mother's neighborhood. How much can we really see? I 
I have, on very good nights, seen Rhea in Saturn. That's 9.7 magnitude. But it has to be a very good night, and uh, the object has to be <clears throat> high in the sky. In my mother's neighborhood, this is to repeat, this is 12 at Crooks and Royal Oak. The sky is caca. Uh, you may remember a, a week ago tonight, we had that dramatic clearing, that stupendous clearing, where the sky at twilight was absolutely brittle. The clouds were like etched, etched, everything high contrast. I mean, really, really a magnificent sky. I went out just after the conclusion of evening twilight, and I looked into Vega. I mean, I'm sorry, into Lyra. Now, in interest of full disclosure, I buy these cheap pharmacy type reader type glasses, right? right. So I'm using a cheap set of eyeglasses, which I'm sorry to say I now desperately need for infinity focus. And all I could get to was 4.6, and that was averted vision in Lyra. That's the best I could do. So, what does this all have to do with the near solar neighborhood? The Observer's Handbook, which is also known as the Book of All Knowledge, and explains why I am so erudite because I sleep with this under my pillow like Charlemagne, as I said at the meeting of the Royal Astronomical Society last May. Dr. Parton was good enough to be in attendance. The knowledge goes directly into my head from this book. <laughs> there is a new feature here. The Nearest Stars by Todd J. Henry. It is a fascinating article. And he has this fulsome roster of the nearest stars. And then, as a subset, he has a little epilogue on his large article. Some easily observable nearby stars. And I think, thought, it was be fascinating try to see how many of the near solar neighborhood one could observe from a neighborhood in a big city or near a big city. I'm not talking about Stargate. Stargate is too far out in Macomb County. beyond, say, row 10, all right? So, may beets grow in your belly. This is, this is the best I could do with my primitive, primitive overhead projection system. No eight colors, no dancing goyles, no fades in, fades out. You know, this PowerPoint business, I have great respect for it. Dr. Parton is an artist, but I use the old ways. Now, what are his criteria, Mr. Henry's criteria? The distance to one of these stars in the near solar neighborhood has to be accurately known. I mean, really accurately. I won't go into, right now, the method of, a, of establishing stellar distances it is beyond this exercise in braggadocio, all right? I mean, if you want to learn some real astronomy, read a book. Don't listen to me. The distance has to be accurately known.
the near stellar neighborhood is designed as five parsecs. That's approximately 16.3 light years. <coughs> and as this slide so elegantly shows, there are 51 systems. And by the way, a fair number of possible planets in that five parsec parallax per second, whatever, that's the contraction, parallax second sphere. A fairly number, uh, through, through, this, uh, through this year, a fairly good number of them are known. Possible. <coughs> Mr. Henry emphasizes the word possible. <laughs> and the trigonometric parallax has to be known to that accuracy, and that's pretty good. You don't get it with a five centimeter refractor on a camera tripod. No, you've got to have a big telescope and big instruments to go up to hang on. <laughs> Gary, does that uh, point two uh, equate to five parsecs? Is that I mean, is that the same thing? No, no, this is, this is the accuracy required, you know, of, the, uh, required of an observation. Right. But that's what gives you five, five parsecs. No, five parsecs is what Mr. Henry or, or his sources <coughs> have decided. They have declared a five parsec radius from the sun to be, quote, near neighborhood. That's it's, five, it's a sphere with it's a, a five sphere. parsec radius. Right, with a five parsec radius. And within that sphere is considered the near solar neighborhood. Within 15 light years. 0.2 arc seconds means that it's 1 20th. You have to have 1 20th accuracy of five parsecs. That's what they're saying. So it's 5 divided by 0.2. Okay. In other words, right and good. Oh, I'm sorry, none. Here. Okay. All right. Distance known to five five percent or better. All right. You know, there's a lot going on in that rather small sphere. And when I was a laddie, these, a distance plus or minus five percent was unthinkable in stellar distances, except for very close stars. I mean, extremely close stars. And there, there it is. Plus the sun, there are 51 known systems within this sphere, and all of this is extracted from this gigantic tome published by uh, Yale in 1995. Well, Let's see what we could do with a small telescope like this. The best observing site in the city of Royal Oak is at the northwest portion of the Royal Oak High School vast <coughs> campus field. Because the eastern and southern horizons, you think, oh, it's a city, it's lousy. Well, yes, it is lousy, but you still got good horizons. The, the south and east horizons from Kimball High School are stupendous. In the east, it's practically a sea horizon. It's that good. And that's where I used to do a lot of the observations with this telescope for Riyadh. By the way, the spelling of neighborhood is as it should be. <laughs> this is a Canadian publication. It is an international standard. And the dropping of the U was an exercise in naked elitism by the American Webster family. And as Americans, you know how we hate elitism. We're all such <laughs> regular guys, aren't we? Except, of course, for Morgan and Vanderbilt. Let's ignore that. So, as it should be. So what do we got here? Sirius is 
obviously brilliant. We all know that. It is a stupendously beautiful star. Interesting enough, it's not an O or B class, it's an A. And from the latitude of London, Sirius is never seen at her true brightness because it does not culminate above the horizon far enough at the latitude of London, which I think is uh, the 51 north. But that's an easy one. <coughs> Rigel Cantaris, known by the uninitiated, by the simple souls, by its alpha sign. But there's something beautiful about Rigel Cantaris. That is the closest star system next to our sun in the constellation of Centaurus. It's quite a sight with the naked eye. Unfortunately, well beyond our abilities here in southern Michigan with a telescope of any size, but easy enough if it's not a rainy night in Rio. Procyon, the little dog star. Easy enough, these are all naked eye. Welcome, brother, yeah. if you're a burden man. Hey, buddy. All right. I just made it here. Is this a cheap play for attention? Yeah. Is this being fashionably late? Is this an attempt to wreck my presentation? Just a word, Gary. Fill in the blank. Our, our movie cannot have its feelings hurt, but we are at 8.34, so... All right, so how much time have I got? Just, uh, we want to hear it, but, you know... How much time? Ten. Huh? Ten. Ten, set, ten minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. From now. Yeah. Okay. Six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tau Ceti, uh, spectral class very close to our sun, thought at one time when I was a laddie to have planets. Project Ozma, 1960, under Frank Drake, was very interested in Tau Ceti. Easy enough to see at magnitude 3.5. Another one Frank Drake was interested in in the early 1960s, Epsilon Uridhani. Easily visible from southern Michigan. Omicron 2 Iridani. Well, easy enough. At, at negative 7 declination, by the way, the masthead means declination. Then we get magnitude distance. That's self explanatory. We all see all of these things from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood except Rigel Pintaris, and then you've got to be in some barrio down in, I don't know, Sao Paulo or something, God forbid. Howie. Uh, that's a problem, isn't it? At a, a declination negative, negative 56, you've got to be pretty bloody well far south. And I'm not talking about, you know, the midnight train to Georgia. Um, not going to see that very easily, even though it is bright at 4.7 in the constellation of Indus. 61 Cygni, beautiful double star system. Easy enough to see, the naked eye, magnitude 5.2. It's a <coughs> wonderful binocular object. This thing. I did a little calculation. All right, ninth magnitude. It might be possible. I mean, this thing is kissing the horizon at upper culmination at, at the latitude of Royal Oak. It's two and a half degrees above the southern horizon. That's upper culmination. It might be possible to see that at Stargate if one can depress the mighty Kalinowski refractor far enough down to the southern horizon. But at 8.9, I wouldn't bet the farm 
That's also where the worst light pollution is. That's all right. It's not a problem. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's definitely a grass challenge. <laughs> Barnard Star, easy to see. Nine, well, easy to see with maybe a somewhat larger telescope. Barnard Star, even though the, the declination is good for Northern Observer, Barnard Star would be at the absolute limit of being able to use this telescope. Loisin Star. Well, 9.9. I think it's just beyond the reach of this thing, even though it, it culminates well up in the, in the northern sky. And there it is, giving once again Mr. Henry the due he deserves for an excellent article, and I recommend the Observer's Handbook to people of all levels of sophistication. It is a wonderful guide. And so one can see nearly all of these with this telescope, but not all of them from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. There it is. Yes, Jerry. Um, what about uh, Alpha Centauri? Well, let the record of this hearing show that I couldn't possibly comment. Can someone help this man? It was on the list of Rigel Centaurus. It was on the list. It was, okay, I missed it then. Rigel Centaurus. I, I don't know whether okay, okay. the Greeks gave that name. The Arabs certainly didn't. Okay. That sounds Greco-Roman to me. Okay. Well, but I learned something. Thank you. See this? This is my scepter of authority. <laughs> Look upon me and tremble. <laughs> Thank you.